Hello everyone, welcome to Coder and Boots. So in this video, we are going to discuss about how to enable Docker API. Okay, so in the previous videos, we have discussed about uh, how to build containers, uh, how to build, I mean, uh, push images to Docker registry, etc. So now we'll discuss about how, how we can enable the Docker API so that we can interact with the Docker server remotely. Okay, so Docker has something called uh, a command line. So that is what uh, we use with Docker, the command Docker in the command line, right? So it is an interface to interact with the Docker. Similarly, uh, we have, we can interact with Docker using the Docker's Rust API or other client programs. Okay, so all the other client programs can interact with this Docker uh, server using Docker's API. Okay, so by default, this API might not be enabled in the uh, in the server. Okay, so uh, by default, the Docker server will be running in on the server, and uh, uh, the the way the client communicates with the Docker server uh, is through a socket file, which is available. It's a unique socket file which is available in the same machine itself. So I am talking about uh, how can we establish a communication with the Docker server which is running on a different server. Okay, so let's get into the practical uh, practi practicals. It is very simple. So this is my machine. So I have uh, Docker over here. So we can see Docker PS. It is already installed and uh, uh, already one container is running in this machine. Okay, so by default, if you see, let's uh, check the list of ports running uh, in this available in this machine. Netstat hyphen T U L P N. That's a command to see like I mean the list of all the uh, uh, the busy or the active sockets or the ports in this machine. So in this one if you will not see anything related to docker okay so by default uh, and let's see let's verify the status of the docker service so one more thing the netstat command will not be there in the machine by default so if you want to install you can uh, install a package called net tools okay so apt install net tools apt install net tools will install the uh, netstat command okay netstat if config so many other network related uh, tools will get or utilities will get installed with app get install net tools if, if you're using rhel or centos you can install yum install net tools okay so that's the thing now uh, let's see the status of the docker service docker status so you see docker is running okay and if you see the description of this entire thing so we have the system service file or the daemon service uh, the docker service file definition in usr lib system d system docker dot service and uh, you see here this is like i mean the executable usr bin docker d so this is the uh, the binary that gets uh, that is running and hyphen h okay so there is an argument uh, and this is like i mean the socket file Okay, the socket file uh, that is, uh, so it's a unique socket file where uh, the command line, whatever like uh, the client program and all, it interacts with the Docker through this socket file. So our goal is to interact with this uh, Docker programmatically or through REST API. So what we need is we need to modify the, the, uh, the way to enable REST API is simple. We need to just uh, modify our service file. Okay, so you can find the service file by checking the status of this Docker service and it will list the details of uh, the entire service and we in our machine this service file is located in USR lib system D system docker dot service in some machine some other operating system it can be even slash lib and all. So you can identify from your machine, okay? So you can just check the service uh, by checking the status of the service, service docker status. So I'm going to edit this file. So nano, I'm using the nano editor and then the service file, I'll open this. And here you can see the unit section, service section. So under the service section, we have exec start. So this is the, uh, the binary that gets called, okay, when we, start this service or stop the service okay so exec start uh, what is happening it is calling something called usr bin docker d and there are some arguments to be passed over here so we will be passing an additional argument to this so that argument is our uh, the network socket part okay hyphen h and we are saying uh, expose it through the tcp as well okay so this one uh, by default i mean the tcp option will not be available so we are uh, telling the docker server to expose the api over a tcp port 2375 so you can specify the port of your choice so uh, any 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 free port you can choose okay so i am adding this one and then we don't need to make any other modification we just need to make addition of this particular argument we can save this file 
once you save the file the next part is we need to reload the service okay because once you make any service ch changes to the system service file you need to reload it so the command is systemctl daemon reload okay systemctl daemon reload this will refresh it if you don't refresh what will happen is if you are trying to restart the docker it will tell there is a modification happened to the service please refresh it kind of okay so i have re uh, reloaded now we need to restart okay so restart the docker service docker restart or system ctl restart docker so you can choose one of those okay service docker restart it is uh, restarting it takes a time some seconds so once it is restarted we will see whether the uh, socket is available or not okay so we have some uh, docker containers running in the docker server that is why it is taking some time to restart because it has to stop those and it has to start those right that's why it took some time but if it is uh, a plain docker server without any containers running it will do the restart very quickly now the restart is over uh, restart happened now let's check the status of the uh, service again docker status okay now it is running and if you see here uh, the additional argument whatever we have passed right hyphen HTCP colon so this uh, additional argument also we can see here okay it is it's visible it is running it is healthy okay now what we need is let's uh, try to access this particular so so let's try to uh, uh, call this API and see okay before that let's verify whether something got changed in the machine so here if you see net start hyphen tulpn we can see this particular new entry tcp port 2375 docker d okay the program docker d has a new socket network socket 2375 okay now let's try to make an api call so apis or docker apis all those details are available in the docker official website so if you go to docs.docker.com reference api engine so there you will be able to see the complete api documentation of uh, the docker okay so let's uh, first list the let's take the api to list the container so the endpoint is slash container slash json okay so slash container slash json so this need to be appended to our uh, ip address colon this port what is our ip address let's verify the ip address if config so 192.168.1.28 right call http colon first let's try it from this machine itself so what's our port 2375 right 2375 slash and what's the endpoint slash container slash json right containers slash json so json will give uh, the output in a json format okay see now it's giving empty result right docker ps so you see uh, there is no container running in this machine okay that's why it is giving it was running but when i restarted what happened is those got stopped the auto restart was not there that is why now no containers are running it's it gave empty result because no containers are running over here so now let's see the images we have a lot of images over here okay so what we can do is instead of containers we can try the api for images okay when we hit the api for images it gave a result with all the details of the available images you see my flask api v3 right uh, coder api v1 right ubuntu right it's listing all so maybe to make it visible in a better way what we can do is we can access this api from a different machine this is my windows machine and we have docker running in the linux machine right let's hit from here so let's do the pretty print now you see it is coming in a better way right so we have the uh, images listed this is the api for listing image now what we'll do is let's start docker ps hyphen a so let's start some container okay docker start container id okay so now a container is started you see now the ubuntu container is started right now using the same api previously when we tested the uh, containers api it was listing empty right see now we can see it's not empty now we have a container uh, that is over here right so ubuntu container and it's giving the uh, result similar to the inspect of the container 
okay it is giving the complete data of what we have in the container so in this way so there are a lot of other apis like get image create uh, create container create image right kill container restart a container all these options are available over here stop a container right everything is available over here so uh, we can either directly use this api okay or there are SDKs available, SDKs available for Python, Java, etc. So we can use those SDKs and uh, interact with this Docker server. So that's why if you see, for example, uh, there are integrations with IDEs like PyCharm, then uh, VS Code, etc. So those are all happening through this API. Okay. So uh, right now I just showed the direct raw REST API to and the interactions, but the same is happening uh, within all the other integrations. Okay. So whatever integrations are happening with other tools, right? All those are using internally this API. So uh, this is a short video. I hope this is useful. So uh, because this is kind of uh, required everywhere, almost every developer, right? Who works on Docker needs this. Okay, so if you have any questions, feedback, comments, feel free to comment below this video. I'll definitely respond back. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this. Have a nice day.